All right, three, two, one. Bump the mic. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the B and O stream today on the twenty. No, it's the ninth. It's the ninth of January, twenty twenty three. Congratulations! You have survived until a new year. I hope you have appreciated uh, going through twenty twenty two. Going eh, eh, or yay. You know, either one. Either way works. Uh, I'm feeling alright. It's the first stream of 2023, so what better way to celebrate the first stream of the year than yet another Wario video game. We'll just go with that, so. Oh, I don't have audio. You didn't hear the ding. I'm sorry, but. Uh, so, yeah. Wario Land 3 is probably the most interesting of the Wario Lands in my eyes, because for me. As a 12-year-old watching people do Let's Plays on the internet, uh, I should have double-checked who exactly was my direct inspiration. But Wario Land 3, I remember watching someone play through the game, and I went, that game looks so interesting and so fun, because it's the kind of stuff that I would really love to, like, look into, I guess. Look into? Just like, it, it just feels like it's got so many fun elements to it. Uh, let's start the game, which just starts off with, uh, oh boy, do you know what Japanese looks like? Uh, yeah, there's barely any, like, Japanese in the game, I feel. But there's enough. Um, so anyway, the game starts off with Wario crashing his plane. Um, but yeah, no, this was the game that kind of inspired me to want to do Let's Playing, and then for some reason I then tried figuring out what were the games people would want to see being Let's Played, and that's what led me to various other games, uh, before I really got up to this one. I think I also had the, uh, idea that I wanted to play the other games in the Mario Land franchise before I got up to this one. That is a fun noise. Anyway, Wario is, uh, turned into a ball and taken into the, uh, snow globe? The, the music box? I think it's a music box. Um... And he was sleeping while it happened, so you didn't know what it looked like. Ah! Clowns! Uh. A hidden figure. Are you aware, Wario? This world is in the music box you were peering into. I was the god that protected this world. But one day, a wicked being sealed away my power and took control of this world. Wario, I want you to find the five music boxes needed to break the hidden seal and recover my powers. If you find them, I'll send you back to your own world. Of course, all the treasure you find is yours to keep. Will you help me? Anyway, Wario contemplates for a while and uh, decides sure. And his adventure starts. But this is a very kind of differently... Well, one, you got, you got a saving menu here. But this is a very differently, like, structured game to what Wario Land 2 was. Wario Land 2 was just a bunch of levels. And in fact, Wario Land 1 was a bunch of levels. Wario Land 3 takes the slightly more open world approach. Where it's, it's actually... Oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do a volume check. I think it's fine. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, Wario Land 3 takes the open world approach. You start this level, it looks normal. You still have the standard array of Wario style moves. Oop. Where he can jump on enemies, dash into them. In fact, to some degree, it's almost exactly the same as Wario Land 2. There's not really any hard difference between what this and Wario Land 2 is on, on the surface. In fact, it's also on the Game Boy Color. Uh, but Wario Land 3 is exclusively on the Game Boy Color. Um, but the key thing is that every level involves, well, includes four treasures. There are 25 levels and 100 treasures total. You're going to see stuff like this, where you go, huh, I don't know what to do. And you're just going to, you're just going to say, nah, I'm opting out. I'm going elsewhere. But you're gonna get zapped, you're gonna get attacked. There's no coins in this one as well, or at least the... on the surface. I think you can still pick up... 
Well, I guess there's still, yeah, there's still coins in that menu. But you don't lose coins for taking hits, really, anymore. I can't even recall if there's a, um, a bonus for having... Oh my gosh. This, this enemy is just in the worst place possible. There you go. Nope. Oh, oops. Yeah, sure, except that. Um, but you got to find these keys. What you want to do in each level is, and, and you <laughs> briefly glimpse at another goodie, but you want to find the key, and in the same run of the level, find the treasure chest that is color-coded to the key. There's three different colored co uh, treasure, sorry, there's four different colored treasure chests. So there's four different treasures in each level. I am on fire, you know, naturally. And he's, but yeah, there's a lot of effects taken straight out of Warrior Land 2, but there's a lot of neat and cool ones. For example, I'm pretty sure if I stand on the slope and duck, and then I do a jump here, I will slide under and grab that musical note coin. Uh, the musical note coins, I believe, give you 10 coins, but also you want to try and collect all of them for a hidden little goodie. And I'll try my best to get that one. You also got these little worm things that are going to get in the way, but move all the way to the top, and he has a chest. With the key in hand, Wario peers around, cracks the lock open, and finds himself an axe. There is a different treasure in every single chest, and what every single well, maybe not near the end of the game, but what all the treasures kind of do is that they open something in the world. So this axe, this magical axe, cuts down this one tree. And provides access to the second level, the Peaceful Village. But it also provides access to the Vast Plain. You now get a choice of which level you want to go to. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you want to try and collect all the treasure. But um, you're able to go into another level. You know, whichever one you know level you want. Find the treasures that you think you're able to get. Move on to other levels and find other treasures. And on top of that, did you notice how when uh, nighttime? This game's got a day-night cycle. Every time you do a level, it changes from day to night. Every time you do another level, it changes back. Um, and uh, different levels have different effects at day and night time. And uh, there's a lot to figure out. There's a lot of like, what am I looking at? There's a giant frog here. It looks like you probably want to push the frog down. I can't jump up, though, because I broke those blocks, so... But... This game, like, fascinated me as a kid. Oh, that is just permanently gone. There's there's gonna be moments like that where you, um... Softlock in terms of the level. Like, you, you just gotta, like, restart the level. Uh, this guy is currently... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You wanna, you wanna pick... You're not gonna pick him up? You're not gonna pick him up? Okay. Sure. Fine. He's not even gonna jump off him. I don't think he has the ability to. And there's a bit of that. There's a bit of like, oh, okay, like, I guess I'll come back later. You gotta watch out for these zombies, because uh, I think they were in Warrior Land 2 as well, where they will, you know, zombify you. There's this guy which is gonna light you on fire. There's a lot of these kinds of effects. Okay, there's the key. So I guess the question is, how do we get the key? I think one trick is, uh, there's a zombie here. He will turn you into a zombie. And that's okay, because you can jump up one ledge at a time. As a zombie, you have the ability- well, one, you don't get hit by these guys. But you also have the ability, when you jump, you turn into a hat. Or I guess you're, you're kind of decomposed to the floor. And so any of these platforms that you could usually jump from under, you technically fall from above. And you gotta walk into a streetlight in order to- Lighten yourself up. So now I've got the key. I've also got one of those coins. So that's cool. Let's go back in the door and redeem our treasure. But yeah, this fascinated me as a kid because yeah, I and especially at the time, I always had felt that Game Boy games were generally simple. And this is coming from a guy who had played Pokemon Gold at this point, and I'm like, yeah, like this just blew my mind. This is like, wow, this like this is just a game all about exploration and puzzle solving. And it's not actually, like, you know, a lives-based platformer. Like, unlike Wario Land 2, you don't even drop coins. 
there's literally no downside to getting hit by anything. It just kind of wastes your time. So, so I picked up one piece of treasure. The other piece of treasure is in N3 here, so you've got to do a different level. And this enemy is good fun, and you're going to enjoy him. He, he hates it whenever he hits a wall or goes into a pipe, but uh, he <laughs> basically blinds you. And I, I love this idea that, like, every, you know, enemy is something kind of bizarre to deal with. And they're all just there to annoy you, to be obnoxious. And that's kind of good fun. Like, what's going on here? Like, there's a mad scientist guy throwing a potion? I'm gonna eat that. Oh, I'm now invisible. And you can only tell that warrior is there because of the tufts of, uh... Of, uh... You know, sand here, but... Uh, top sand? The dust. But kind of annoyingly, it's like, okay, well, now I can pick up the key. But I can't deliver it to the chest yet. Because Wario has to... Well, oh, maybe I should have gotten that. How about we we'll go and get that? Because <laughs> I'm going to need to get him eventually. But yeah. And this was kind of like... Uh, me as a kid, I really wanted to start, like, learning and playing new game experiences. And I feel like this is the kind of take-home I've started to kind of understand a bit more about just, like, what exactly does interest me about all these different kinds of games. And... The big thing for me is, yeah, like, I really want to just go, hey, like, what is this experience? And sometimes, like, you know, it's been a while, I want to relive that experience, or like, you know, remind myself, because honestly, it's been ages since I've played Warrior Land 3, I cannot remember really much about it. I know at the beginning, it's super simple, you go through a few levels and you're like, yeah, okay, you know, makes sense, makes sense, but... As, as the game goes on, it's like, okay, which levels have I cleared, which levels have I not, what is available, and so on. Uh, and you just go from there. So, with both pieces of the, um, tablet? Medallion? You plug it into the door. And this door all the way over there opens up into the side of the cave, which reveals... Another world on the west side of the uh, island slash music box. The desert ruins. So, yeah, every level, and on top of that, by the way, um, different levels sometimes let you beat them in a different way when it's day or nighttime, um, but still get the same treasure. But uh, this, um, this next level, I think, is a great example of you're going to do the level, and uh, in one direction, the level is you know, blocked off here. It's like, okay, well, this wall only appears when it's the sun. You know, when the sun's out. You can still do this, though, I guess. But I don't know if I'm, like, fully locked off here. Because it's like, oh, okay, well, the sun's there, so... There wasn't really anything in that room that seemed to indicate anything was blocked off. You can obviously fall down and be like, oh, okay. But also on top of that, yeah, Warrior lacks abilities. So not only are you, like, you know, going through the levels, it's like, well, you're going to unlock abilities and be able to return through levels, or return to levels, with new knowledge. So, yeah, this wall's up because it's nighttime. Also, I am fat! I gotta walk it off. This is the most annoying one of the, uh... Of the... The penalties, so to speak. I mean, it's good to teach you that, but then it's like, yeah, you know exactly what I'm going to be up against. Yep. Another one. So, uh, this is a red key. It's the same thing, it's just for a red chest. I think you can actually pause the game and see what keys you got, but, uh, I guess this will be the perfect test of do you keep the keys between, uh, going in and out of the levels, because it'd be nice if you didn't have to go back, but makes sense. But yeah, I really wanted to just, like, exp you know, have new experiences and just, like, play all these different kinds of games and really kind of broaden my horizons of, of games and to some degree, you know, to music as well. I'll still have favorites, of course, and there'll be games where it's just like, nah, man, I, I just don't have the urge to beat that. You gotta watch out for these guys, they're gonna Sonic Boom you off the platform. So if you want to be Sonic Boomed over there, the warrior splits it off and uh, then reassembles because, I guess, gravity. Now watch out for this guy, he's gonna turn you into a ball of yarn if you let him. Okay, that's a very interesting platform, but sure. There we go, oh, 
playing soccer with him. Oh, up the top, here we are. Deliver the red key into the red chest. And the goodies are discovered. I guess all the treasures seem like they're very quick to get, but... It's just the early ones, really. The later ones, you gotta start digging more and more throughout the levels to find all of these treasures. And, uh... That gets good fun. That gets good fun, so... But yeah. We'll, we'll witness more of the game, but I've got a couple of topics for... Um... For today. So yeah, you get the treasure, and then you're like, Where do I go? It doesn't unlock any new levels. Uh, you have to kind of know that you gotta go back into the previous level. Yep, okay, keys are lost. Keys are, keys are lost between levels. You gotta know that you gotta go back into the, the previous, or the, the level you were just in, and grab the other key. Um, you could take maybe a guess because of the, uh, the sun texture on this side, but I guess if you went left initially, you know, whoops, you know, you're not gonna see all of this. Um, but I guess, like, you know, the player's got to learn at some point that they've got to return to earlier levels. And so what better way than literally having no other option? You got to teach the player some real cheeky platforming business as well, like doing crouch jumps like that. That just seems like, hey, you know, the average game isn't going to teach a player how to do a crouch jump. Here's a bit of a cheeky room, because if you let this guy get ya, you then become Springy Wario, where you will basically force your way back to the top of the level. And you gotta wear it out. Your punishment is your patience. There we go. Let's jump over him. Gotta crush him. Get him out of the way. Guess we got a music coin there. Out of here, man. Uh, this one's gonna be iffy because he's hiding right there. There we go. And there we go. Pass all of them. And what is on the other side here? Why, yes, the gray chest. So I'll reveal the goods. And there we go. There's another piece of treasure. In fact, this is the top of the note, so is the bottom its own thing? Maybe. Your ultimate goal is to get those five uh, music boxes, and they will be five of the hundred treasures of the game. So, so even though there's 25 levels compared to Warrior Land 2's big 50, I feel like there's also, you know, a lot more depth to the levels. There's more going on all over the place. And you got to deal with the day-night cycle as well, so that changes up things somewhat. But on top of that, like, it's a Game Boy Color game, and it's not even a regular Game Boy game. It's like, there is a fair bit of, you know, visual flair to this game, and kind of, I guess, horsepower behind it, because it's on the Game Boy Color. They were like, well, we know we're working with a 4 megahertz, um, 8086 chip, not an 8086. It's 8826, it's like some kind of Motorola chip that the Game Boy Color is, using, and the original Game Boy. This is fun, trying to find the needle in the haystack. Which, uh, which wall do you go into? And then I'm seeing that, I'm going, what? So you're gonna wander around a lot of these levels and go like, huh, what am I on? We've got platform here, okay. And I've fallen, and I have landed. Pretty much... I'm pretty sure, yeah, the door I entered was right there, so... I think I might be able to get that coin with a good jump. Mm. There we go. I was thinking, I was like, yeah, that didn't quite look right, but... Uh, but yeah, so... Now, 2023 has already started with a little bit of a fun news. I guess I need, like, a little soundbite. I need to, like, have a little soundbite of going Blendo Rambles about technology news, and particularly in the... Consumer technology news, but you know what, uh, like, there's a bit of everything, and, uh, I have my right hand off the control then, um... Ah, oh, the second jump is... There we go. That's the key I need, because you're still gonna need a key. 
You're gonna need the key. I, that, me saying still need a key kind of gives away the uh, inevitable point of the level, but... Do I need to jump here? Because I'm thinking, like, this is gonna keep going, isn't it? Yeah, that keeps going for a, uh, for a coin. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, I'm gonna need to roll back. You can see as well, it's like there's a path down below as well. Oh, there's a silver coin, silver coin. They baited me. I think those silver coins are set as well, so... They're always gonna taunt someone, so hold on, if I do a jump... I gotta jump into the middle platform again, so... There we go, that's what I wanted. And now I gotta do it again, but drop down. So... But yeah, in the world of techie news, I guess, uh, since... When was the last stream? It was December, like, 21? It was a bit. Uh, oh, I can get this one. I can get it. Phew. Um, pretty much, uh, we've had the release of... Oh, it's the boss! So the boss fires those, uh, hammers. You know those ones, those ones from earlier. You want to get the, the glowy drums, and then... Oh, well, pfft. This was totally unexpected. Anyway, you bounce up to the top and take a hit for your measures. Thanks. But I guess I did fall down into, uh, a bit here, and now I've dropped here, so... How about let's roll all the way back? It's kind of like, yeah, okay, there's a boss there. So, yeah, there's there's bosses as well, but, like, the bosses still require you to grab a key and go from there. So there really wasn't any point in me going left, was there? Like... Because I'm thinking, like, you can't time a jump to get out of there. And there's no real way to keep rolling in this direction. Doesn't look like it. There's blocks here, which make me think... There must be a way to keep going left, but, uh, listen, the boss is there, that's the way the game probably is, like, telling me to go, They're like, hey, you know, fight that boss. You got this, man, you got this. So, yeah. Uh, but, I guess, in the first bit of technology, it's not even news, but it's just something, like, interesting. Um... Or I guess two, two things interesting about what I want to do. So, in the mail today, I got a silicon power... Silicon power, whatever the SSD was. Okay, let's watch out for this guy. He's gonna start going. Bonk. There you go. And uh, in doing that, uh, a hammer appears, but the hammer is a platform, and that will float you up to the door. And the door is this convenient door here. So that will get you to the treasure. So... Uh, this is a Silicon Power P34A60. It's a very cheap SSD. I got it for very cheap, like 85 bucks. Um, Australian, mind you. Um, ooh, overalls. Power up. There you go. Um, I got a couple of other parts, so, like, uh, well, I finally did that 13900KF. Uh, build, but yeah, you go, you got a ground pound now. So, you can now use it to go, hey, if there were breakable blocks underneath you, or these weird frog things, you can now push them out of the way. That's pretty cool. And now, what the game does is it flickers that N1 and N3 have something for you to look at. And yeah, you get the choice. I think you, you actually have the ability to look at N1 or N3 and go, hey, yeah, like, which level do I want to go back to? So that's real cool. I, lo I really love how this game, like, handles this, where it's just like, okay, now you got a ground pound. Figure out where to use it. And you go back to this level and you're like, okay, well, there's that up there. That's still interesting, because now I'm paying attention. But you can also see, well, there was a frog here, so let's push the frog down. And suddenly now we're in this whole new area of the level. Where the lighting keeps going all over the place, but I can still ground pound, so that's cool. There's a red chest there. you got these weird things that pick you up. you got to hit A to dance out of them. Um, but yeah, so, uh, all my parts arrived on the Monday of when I did the last stream of the year. Um, which, uh, yeah, it meant that, uh, I didn't build any of it before the last stream. I was like, oh, okay. But I finally did build it. I think I built it the day after. Um, and, uh, 
it was decently easy. I was expecting to like goof up building a new computer. Um, it's not really a whole new computer because like the graphics card is already used. But the the theory, it's like yeah, okay, it's you know there's a new motherboard. Everything has to go out except for the power supply and the um, the SATA drives. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I popped the CPU in, popped the RAM in, and then it was like, yeah, no, it actually showed up. Everything all showed up, so that was really neat. That was real cool. So, uh, now this, this, by the way, various levels have a golf minigame. Costs 10 coins to play one, so this is your use of coins throughout the game. You get to now be good enough to play this golf game. You see where you can knock the, the thing to, and you gotta get it all the way into the hole. Don't get into the lava, you will fail. You got it's a whole three-point kind of plan of golf as well. So you gotta look ahead, go, hmm, where is this gonna go if I max it out? Okay. Okay, that wasn't quite the best hit. And you gotta get it under par as well, which is uh, a bit mean. So I look at that and I go, hmm, that should probably be like 85% or so. Okay, well, I overshot a little bit, but that's okay. Cool. Cool. That's how the system works. Don't, don't... You gotta let the bar go the whole way. Well, yeah, this is where pretty much all my money's gonna go. This is rough. This is really rough. I gotta deal with the rough. How am I gonna knock it over the water if there's rough? Oh my gosh. There's no... Is there any success? There's no success for me. Because that's going to use up another shot. Oh, I'm still on this side of the... This golf is, seems a bit crueler than what I remember. I don't remember it being like this savage. And the worst part is that there's multiple treasures where you're going to have to do it like this. This is the same one. My eyesight is just dead, apparently, so, okay. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, okay. How is Wario walking over that water? Okay, okay, I got this. Hole in one, hole in one, I'm a god. There you go. First try, first try. I've been playing too much Switch Sports. I have been, like, whooping people at golf in that game, I tell, I tell you. so. Um, but yeah, I got some beginner's uh, tips for the 13900K uh, to let people know. So first of all, update the BIOS. I'm using a Gigabyte Z790 Gaming XAX, um, and it's a fairly decent board. Also, I guess, yeah, clear the minigame and the block goes up, so uh, it's a fairly good board and kind of has all the features I need, and it didn't... It's weird, it doesn't have Gigabyte's ARS branding or their ultra durable branding, it's just... It's just a, a board, I guess. So, but all the, the BIOS features are there. Uh, when you update the BIOS, go in and click Load Optimized Defaults. Whatever defaults were on the board was not the optimized defaults, because by supposed default, the board decided to have multi-core improvements and a lot of other stuff enabled, and it basically drove the processor to try and pull a constant 5.8 gigahertz all core on the P cores and 4.3 on the E cores, or 4.4, I think. Um, anyway, that revealed a bunch of a bunch of levels, but uh, I think also you're like, hmm, okay, but what about N3? Because N3 lit up, and that's very important as well. You might need both of these in order to continue. Uh, but. Yeah, it, it had everything tuned up so high. So high that I ran Cinebench, just first thing, R23. I got 40,000, like, right up on my NHD 15. Now, I want to preface this by going, for some reason, various, like, stability tests ran fine, but I could feel after a bit, like, I tried running my own programs, and I would get C-sharp system access exceptions. I would get parts where the memory corrupted on on um, the program I was running. And uh, I think OBS kind of felt the same, and that's why I was like a little concerned. I was like, is this too many cores? Is this like not playing nice? No, the, the problem was 
It was it was running over. It was it was literally just running way too powerful for what it really was able to do. So don't expect the CPU to like do crazy miracles like that. But okay. Cool. Don't expect the CPU to do crazy miracles like that. Turn, I also even, like, impose the power limit, because by default the power limit is 4,095 watts, both PL1 and PL2. This processor will draw way too- well, it's not going to actually draw that much power, because it'll kind of hit just the limit of the board, and also it would get hot immediately. So, uh, but, uh, it would try and draw about 250. Okay. Yeah, we got it, we got it. We'll draw about 250 watts, and I feel like that's like... I mean, that's that's my cooler limit, basically. It's fine pushing that, but it's also like, yeah, the cooler itself isn't going to be able to, like, constantly dissipate it if it's drawing that much, so... So this is kind of neat, that bar went up, and now... This guy, what he does is he stings Wario, and Wario starts going up. And it's your goal to notice what exactly you're trying to pick up at the end. It's kind of cool. It's kind of neat. Fun little, you know, use the ability to, to continue on, so... Uh, but yeah, no. So hit load optimize defaults. The board will then pull the more conservative, I'm just going 5.5 outside of the turbo window. And for some reason my board always thinks it's outside of the turbo window. But that's okay. Um, I would like to kind of figure it out a bit more. Maybe kind of encourage it to stay in the turbo window a bit longer. I don't have the key yet. <laughs> I, got, I went up here, I'm like, oh wait, there's no key. Alright. So I'm now gonna go up here and go, oh, well, there was the key the whole time, right there. Um, so yeah, once you got that as well, uh, I also had a uh, pair of uh, Kingston Hyper Beast Fury uh, uh, something RAM, but it was clocked at 5600 uh, CL36. I found, it, with the initial testing, it was able to just be set to 6200 with the 1.35 volt uh, V-Core set. Um, 6200 is very, very good. I'm sticking with 5600 for the moment because I haven't quite tuned the timings to really make it better. But the clock speed can go up that high, and I'm like, that's pretty neat for, like... I mean, I did my research and I was like, I knew this would be a Hynix kit of memory, so... But yeah, no, that's cool. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, I, I've been running a bit more standard and just kind of understanding like how does the 13900K have work uh, a bit more. How do the P and E cores work? Um, how do you like assign things between the P and E cores? And I haven't really quite figured that one out. I know you can go into the task manager and set the core affinity once something's running. Um, and generally I've actually not had a bad time with it just running by default. Um, Yes, by the way, crayon. Like, that's it. That was all it was. I think that crayon is necessary for something later on, but, uh, for now, I think we just continue. To the pool of rain. I remember this level giving me massive headaches and going, oh, I've got to figure out puzzle. Because you got to bounce on these and hope for the best. Oh, that doesn't go down anymore. Got to push it. <laughs> Push it a bit along. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, other than that, then it was like, let's figure out Windows 11, because Windows 11's the thing. And I still hate the taskbar. I just don't get it. Okay, right, I think this is good. This will push me up here. Oh, there's the key. Cool. Uh, I don't like Windows 11. I feel like, yeah, if it, like, I mean, granted, I don't think there's any reason to use Windows 11 still, unless you've got one of these CPUs that has a bit of a mixed architecture, and, uh, I think we're going to see that with the new, uh, AMD Ryzen 7000 X3D CPUs, because, uh, which were announced, uh, last week, I'll just say, um, and, uh, with those CPUs, it's like, they have, um, more ca- uh, more cache cache? on some of the cores. Unlike, well, if you got the, the 8 core one, then it's got the cache on all of them, but if you've only got the, if you got the 12 core, it's like the cache is only on one of the CCXs, so uh, it's an interesting design 
like, thing you gotta get around. I think you gotta do these, like, cheeky jumps to get this to work, but that's kind of the fun part about this level. And look at that! That's where the treasure is. Cool. So, uh... Yeah, uh... But, yeah, apart from the taskbar, I can work with everything else. I am having this one issue, and I've seen it reported in one place, uh, where sometimes Windows Explorer just pops up at specifically 10.30 a.m. If you've got a window open but not focused, it will just focus at 10.30 a.m. every day. It's repeatable. I don't know what's up with it. Doesn't matter what window I'm on, it will always focus. Just don't know why. So... Microsoft, get on there. Bill Gates, whoever. Oh gosh, we got the teddy bears. And blobos. Not the blobos. Look at the homing shots as well. Oh, uh, eggplants on the wall. Okay, there's a key there. Got some more blobos. Okay, well it's down here, so... I guess I will go through this door. Let me try to figure out what I'm looking at here. Okay, more doors. And then there's the blue chest. So, yeah, there's the gray, the red, green, and blue chest. There's the blue one. So I've now flicked the switch. There's the blue key. Usually you can expect the blue key to be near the end. Usually. You could it it could still be otherwise it could still be otherwise so uh, but yeah other than that um, I guess yeah expect the 13900k to definitely run hot if you don't curb it set that set PL1 and PL2 in the BIOS do whatever like just hard limit you want the the power to be the CPU will handle itself it will it's all fine this is a very interesting bottom of the level also I guess yeah like if flick a switch and now I can't like. You know, I can't go back up to get the red key, so... This is, uh, I guess, walled off to me. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Oh my gosh. Aha! I hit it too fast. Um. Alright, well, ground floor, schmound floor. Let's explore the ground floor. Which, in turn, goes back up. So, uh, any other things? Um, yeah, so with the, the power limit, I started getting 38,000 and eventually 36,000 once I realized that the cores were running at kind of unstable versions. 36,000 is still what people kind of say is in line with what the CPU should do at that power level, so that's all fine. I'm not concerned that I'm running it poorly. Uh, I guess there is more headroom if I had the ability to draw even more power away. But you know what? 36,000 absolutely crushes my last process is like 7,500. And the single core is about double as fast as well. So it's definitely like on paper, it's good. Now, what's the effects of that? What is actually the like the use cases of improving I am fat? Uh, what is the use cases of improving the processor like that? Well, one thing I decided to do was Let's do a render test. Let's, because every time I render a video, it's a CPU-based render. It's, I mean, it's like a little bit of graphics acceleration, but it's not really, it is mostly a CPU thing. Um, and uh, a stream that would take an hour 15, maybe, to re-encode, 15 minutes. So, that is, like, such a, like, massive point for me. That is something that I would really love to, you know, to use, to utilize a bit more, is the fact I wanted to... Do more video rendering. I'm curious whether that's the same switch, uh, or it could just be a switch like from outside. You get stuff like this where it's like here's a long like hallway. There was the, there was the weird like boiler thing, and now I am on fire. Oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I remember. Like your your eyes have to kind of like pick this. You could, you could probably tell, because it's a Game Boy game. But it's like, if you couldn't, like, see what exactly, like, I had to do here. I mean, we were pushing this earlier, but it's like, you keep pushing it until you notice that this is an open window. It's a, it's a decently large different sprite, but, like, it doesn't, like, have a different color. You have to kind of just notice that it was from outside. 
Uh, but I've also hit a switch, and hitting that switch should allow me to... Yes. So now... If I go back up here and we push the, the thing now, I can keep pushing it to the left instead of it getting stuck. Um, so yeah. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Um, also, other things. So I came out of a 9700K um, Z390 build. Um, my games have been maybe 1% better with the new CPU. D depending on the game, but there's a lot of games where it's like, at what I'm playing, at 4K on high, on like, you know, as high settings as I get a good frame rate, I'm not really, like, improving with a better processor. It's, it's like, it, it, my, my performance would be better with a better graphics card. Pretty much every time. Um, I've got an older 1080 Ti. I love how that level ends. It's just like one tiny block. You go through all that work just to break one block. But there you go. That's, that is that block. We got another gear. A gear, you say? Why, well, yes. Plug it in, and we've got two gears, which means... This mystical elevator has turned on, revealing the long-lost magical elevator. And the magical elevator goes... to S1. It just, it just goes to the south part of the island. So, there's a new level. To the grasslands. Oh, that's a level you can go left. I feel like that's most levels. This is a ladder, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so a lot of the levels go right, and then it's like, you just kind of go left to you know, realize you fell into a pit. That kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else other than, yeah, 1300k. Get a good cooler. You're going to need it. Um, DDR5, not really necessary, and ultimately... A lot of people are people who play games, and they're definitely going to know, yeah, like, my performance is not really going to improve with a better CPU. Literally just invest in a better graphics card. That is, like, the single best way. I am spinning. I am drunk. I am dizzy. I am walking on my own, and I fell into the pit on my own. Um, so yeah. Even including better storage, honestly, like, at least... From my direct game playing experiences, and granted I haven't been playing too much, I've been playing a lot of the uh, Gran Turismo 4 on an emulator. It's just been really good fun, real nostalgic for me. Uh, I am up real high, I'm gonna drop. Oh my gosh, it's a worm! Oh, he's fired a rock at me. And I've fallen down and I can't get up. They've got me on that one. Um, but yeah, ultimately at the end of the day, like, I'm assisting a bunch of people with, um, kind of, like, specs of stuff they want to buy for, for their processor and all that other stuff. And it's just like, there's a degree of, like, yeah, you could, oh, hit him in the stomach. You could get, like, fancier parts and fancier, like, CPU parts. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you have to know what do you actually want to do with it? And what, like, do you actually, like, think accomplishes that? Um, because a lot of people I've talked to, they think that because they've always been buying the i7, they should be buying the, uh, you know, the second CPU from the top. I'm hitting this guy quite a bit. He pops up. <laughs> I'm hitting him a bit. Maybe I gotta ground pound him. Oh, okay, oh, not with that, not with that spirit, but that's probably what it is. Is that... He takes the, the charge blow. This is what I mean. You get you get your repertoire of moves and you go, ah, okay, okay. So I hit him again and then There you go. He doesn't like that. Now he's moving a bit quicker. That was a bit easier now that I had an idea of what to do. Oh my gosh, plants! I don't have the key yet. <laughs> I picked up the red key, so he's still dead. It's just, yeah, I gotta get the key. It's a little anticlimactic. This game, like, oh, okay. What's the other keys just in here? 
Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, glittery caves. Oh, that's the key. So I think you gotta let this guy... Nope. Yeah, you gotta have a guy crush you. Then you become a little squishy warrior. He floats down from ledges. But you gotta watch out. These guys are gonna grab you. Whoop. Well, that didn't, that didn't work out, so... But yeah, yeah. Don't overspend on parts. And even on top of that, like, previous advice of... Uh... Of, uh, you know, oh, you know, get a, a processor that's half the value of a graphics card. Nah, get a... Get a graphics card that makes, you know... That's really good right now. Because that seems to be the, the, the gist here. I feel like you're probably just gonna walk off, like, maybe this platform. Nope. One above. One above. Second from the top. There you go. Grab that key. And now I gotta gradually wander back and, and you gotta get pulled up as well. There you go. Oops. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, like... I don't know, especially as well, this is probably a good segue into, uh, we've, uh, reached the era of what on earth do I spend on a computer these days? We actually, like, I've been generally a bit better on the reception of... There's the plants. Uh, on the reception of, like, the PS5 and the Xbox One, the, the Xbox Series pricing, um, where they launched for 500 US dollars each, 750 Australian, 750 Australian is a fair bit for a console. Um, I don't think it's quite absurd. I mean, PS3 and the Xbox 360 launched for a fair decent price. I think it was like 630 and 700 Australian, so... These both being 700 and eventually 800 because 750 wasn't sustainable. Look at that, it's a music box! What a wonderful jingle. Was so good, I needed to hear it twice. Oh, London Bridge just came down. The big bridge. Big bridge. There we go. This music gets you going. Also, yeah, rip people who go right. This is water, I think, but there's also water over there. Ah, uh, but ugh, I got fish slapped. This gave me fear of cheap cheeps, I tell ya. All that just to ground pound here and then realize you can't really do anything in the water. Actually, you might be able to go back over. There might be something over here. Or there's not, but one of the two. Um, but yeah, we've got the, the 4070 Ti got announced at, uh, um... The, uh, at CES 2023, NVIDIA's, uh, 70 Ti, um, graphics card. And, uh, the, the big thing that I keep seeing people say is, this card is not worth it. Um, and that's even saying that NVIDIA, they kind of broke the expectation that they were just going to re-release the old 4080 12 gig. They slapped 4070 Ti on it, and hopefully no one remembered that story. Uh, unfortunately, people do remember that story, and I think they forever will. Uh, that was a real quick level, by the way. Cool. Um, but, for reference, if people didn't know, uh, NVIDIA, when they announced the, um, the RTX 4000 cards initially, they announced two 4080s. One had 12 gigabytes of VRAM, and one had 16 gigabytes. They were both gonna release at the same time. People were so upset about the 12 gigabyte variant because they were looking at it and going, hey, all the specs are different. And this will perform significantly worse than the regular 4080. NVIDIA ended up kind of caving into that feedback and they said a week later they're unlaunching the 4080 12 gig. Look at all these beans. This is also what I like about this game, just the fact that like you'll do something, and suddenly it's like now there's all these like stalks in this love in the overworld. But on top of that, that just meant that three different levels had something change about them. So now, you've got to go, what levels do I do? Let's go back to S1, because now, there's a beanstalk. And that beanstalk might help me out. Get, a uh, another, another goodie. Also, because this mem uh, level's fresh in my memory, so. 
Um, so anyway, so NVIDIA basically... Uh, and granted, I, I think it was the right move because the criticisms were correct. The, the two cards were different and calling them both the 4080, one with 12 gigs and one with 16 gigs, isn't fair when they're also using different, like, main core dies. I don't know if that picked up on my mic, but hopefully it did. That was wonderful. Um, they've got different cores on them. Oh, and, and different, like, they are differently sized dies. I don't think it's fair to call them both the same product. Um, I think that there's some bits on it, like the memory bus being narrower, that's like, yeah, it's not great. I get it, and if it's good enough, then sure. I definitely look at it and I go, okay, but there is less memory bandwidth than the 3080, both versions. Um, but especially, especially the 12 gig if we're really going for it. Um, I wonder what's over here. I've got the red key, but... I guess that is the bean store. Oh, there's another minigame, isn't there? Okay, well... Maybe, maybe I gotta keep going up to find the, the beanstalk, or find the rest of what I'm looking for here. Aha! Well, it's a coin. Maybe I could just... There we go. I was like, hmm, they're gonna give me an idea here. There you go, teaching the player that, yes, some blocks can be broken. Just arbitrarily. And very, very mean as well. Oh, I made it, I made it, it's all cool. And then they're also like, ah, oh, and there's a coin. Dang it. I think I to get the coin. Um... So yeah, so anyway, they, uh, at CES, they basically said, yes, here's the 4070 Ti. Um, the other thing with the, the only thing that they really did with the 4070 Ti was they called it, sorry, they, they called it a different name, and they launched it at 800 US dollars instead of the 900 US dollars. Uh, this converted into Australian, it was 1479 instead of 1619. Um... And to me, I look at it, I go, okay, well, it depends on how good it is. Now, NVIDIA being NVIDIA, they couldn't help themselves and say, it beats the 4090, the th hole in one baby, hole in one baby. Uh, they, they said like, oh, it beats the 3090 Ti by like three times in Cyberpunk. And I'm like, with the frame generation, because it can generate frames using DLSS, it's rendering intermediate frames while the rest of the chip works on the actual frames. It is not a fair test, and depending on how you view it, and I think the frame generation tech, it's not there yet. There's too much visual artifacting in various games, like F1 2022 or Fight Sim. Maybe it's changed. I don't have a card. I can't test it myself. But I would definitely go, oh, what, what did I pick up, by the way? A compass? Oh, I picked up a wheel. Now I can wheel. Yeah! So now this level, I love that as well. You've got three, you know... You've got three, like, things going on. But, like, some levels have, uh, you know, new parts to, new things to get. So, like, I look at this and I go, well, W3 needs to, you know, have, have a, a new thing, because there's a beanstalk here. So it's like, now... You know, the game really opens up. You suddenly have, like, so many things going on. <laughs> the beanstalk pushed up this rock all the way. Um, but yeah, so it's the same chip. It's just they changed the name, which, good on them, and honestly, that's the most important thing, that they changed the name, because, yeah, they're two different chips. Uh, but the internet will never be purely satisfied. What people complained about is something awfully arbitrary in my eyes. They looked at the two chips, or rather the three the three GPUs that are out now, and they say the the 4080 is really a 4070, and the 4070 Ti is really a 4060, or a 4060 Ti. And the only justification they have is someone's made a chart which compares the amount of CUDA cores in the top-end GPU 
of each architecture generation, and granted they're also counting... Actually, I think, I think workstation GPUs also don't have more CUDA cores, they have different like features and more VRAM, which is uh, kind of the big thing, and in some cases HBM. Um, but, uh, like, various top cards included the Titans, or in some cases they didn't. I saw one chart, it didn't include the Titan X, the second one, uh, which granted, it was a bit moot because it became the 1080 Ti, but they make their charts look better by claiming that there's a 1080 Ti that high in the charts for 700 bucks. Which, that's true, but also that 1080 Ti wasn't out for another year in the, in the uh, lifespan of the, you know, the system. I think, like, it's, it's fair to go, yeah, that was a really good value card. I mean, I have one. I, th I think it's good for a good reason. Um, I actually should look into lo what's in that door as well, because clearly you couldn't have gone in this door earlier. If this has the- okay, that has the chest. That has the chest. Um, so, but yeah, the, the other thing as well is that, like, the windows, the regions are fairly large. For the- for the 3080, that has about 82.5% of the cores compared to the 3090, which is what they deemed as the top. Or the 3090 Ti, I think. No, actually, I think they were the same. Um, but then the 2080, only had like, you know, 67%. And they considered them both within the 80 class, despite the fact that, well, I mean, one relative to its highest card is 67% and one's 82%. Like, that's a, that's at least a decent difference, I would personally say. Um, the 4080 is 62%. Uh, and also, by the way, they are considering the 4090 to be 90% of some hypothetical chip that's not even out yet. Which, fair call, I think we can see that there will be a better chip coming. I got a goat head. Skull. I don't know if it's a goat head. What does it do? <laughs> Nothing, apparently. Nothing at all. So yeah. Uh, we could go into W2. I feel like let's look at the other Beanstalk level as well. So, I think that was N3, because, yeah, the Beanstalk's next to you. Oh, well, there's a Beanstalk. That's a, that's a big one. Um, I don't think it's quite the fairest comparison. I, I feel like a lot of the things I say are like, I'm probably a video shilling. I've, I've definitely said I would love to work on, like, actually work on things that NVIDIA works on. Um, but I also feel like, yeah, there are some things like, yeah, like, the naming of the original chip was silly. Like... Like, I'm cool saying that kind of stuff. I feel like there's a degree of, like, what's a fair product and what's not. Um, and ultimately, at the end of the day as well, it's like, the performance is fair given other cards. It's not great, but what kind of happened in the past, I feel, is that you'd have a release, and that, re like, that release would be why, like, that would push the new chip to be like so much angry son- oh my gosh, his son is super angry. He's coming after me, man. I'm scared. I am super scared. Don't come at me, son. Oh my gosh, we gotta do a minigame as well. Um... But like, yeah, usually you'd have- it's the new GPU release and that pushes the- market of everything else down, basically. Because it's like, hey, it comes out, it's so much better for the same price. NVIDIA's kind of doing it a bit reverse now. They are releasing the card at a fair enough price, and then... Oh, hey, first try. Uh, they're releasing the card at a fair enough price, like fourteen seventy nine. It's not quite the greatest price, but given that in games it mostly beats the 3090, not quite the 3090 Ti. It's got less VRAM, I think it's got less utility in that regard, but it's also better in ray tracing. I look at it and I go, yeah, sure, I'll accept that. Like, that's fair, especially for that price, because it's like, the 40, the 3090, like, under heavy discounts, reached that price. Uh, okay, well, that's the green chest. I need to get the green key, which was just, like, a bit lower. Okay, so, uh... Okay, well, there's the green key, sure. 
I've already got like the two, yeah, I've already got two of the, the treasures, so it's like, now we're getting a third one. It's kind of weird, like, feeling that, because it's like, oh, okay, I'm like, this level is technically nearly almost done, but there's always going to be some things later on that will come up as well. Not more treasures, but just, like, stuff that you might need in order to get the, uh, I finally got yarned. Um, stuff that you'll need in order to get the coins. Um, but yeah, I look at the price and I go, it's fair. I don't think looking at the architecture and going how much stripped down it is, is particularly useful, especially given the 4090 is 3,000 Australian dollars. If the other cards were 3,000 Australian dollars, I'd complain. Like, well actually, sorry. I would say it's a miracle that the other cards released so cheaply because they were 80% of the $3,000, like, landmark card. But they weren't. Like, oh gosh, we Shazam, the two rings. Kablooey. Oh my gosh. It's Pisa. So does that mean I was just having rings on my fingers? I think it's actually worth going to Pisa right now. Like, I know that there was something else on the way, but it's like... Pisa's, Pisa's calling out to me, man. Look how flickery bright it is. The Tower of Revival. Well, there's the chest, so... Let me just find where we go from there. A burning flame. And some bits that definitely look like torches you get a light. There's a little icon up there, so... The challenge is set. Touch the flame, and run! Oh, I've goofed it. I've goofed it so hard. Or not. Well, I'm, I'm still going. I'm still going. I'm still going. I think it's because I'm relighting- oh no, I thought I was relighting myself. Well, that's okay. Um... But yeah, so... Uh, on, on the flip side, I can also go, hey, if if you think, you know, the 4070 Ti costs a lot, that is completely within your, your jurisdiction to do that. You are free to not purchase a product because you don't think it's worth it. And I 100% like would want more people to think they don't need these cards because ultimately at the end of the day, a cheaper card, like, well, these cards release at the same prices as like, the 3090, and perform the same. Which means, just buy the older card. I'm looking at this going, what is going on here? You can't shift that one across. Or can you? You can if you're wise. Okay, so push that into the corner. Keep going, it's still on screen the whole time. And then, pff, nice. And then I just jump back up, easy, easy. I'm going up in the tower. I'm going up in the world. Um, but yeah, like, like, if you, if you discount the name, pretend it was a 4060, it performs so crazy good compared to, like, previous generations. It still does. It's still a high price, and honestly, I think NVIDIA's kind of confused people in their rapid, you know, kind of pushing up of the, uh, of the naming stack. The, like, the 4070 Ti has had this connotation of being, like, the borderline enthusiast card. 1400 bucks makes it very enthusiast. It, like, they, they, the names don't mean much. And that's fine. People just need to, like, look past the name. Don't use the term 60 class, 70 class. I don't know why I'm seeing people use the term class so much. There is no science to any of that. I love how I am so fat I have broken back into the older area. That's a, Actually, that's pretty good because that means I can now just float up from here, right? It was secretly a checkpoint the whole time. 
I gotta watch out for the little choo-choos. I don't know what they're called. It's, it's Nintendo, there's probably a, a Mario-y name for everything. Please don't tell me the chest is over there on the left, I gotta do this twice, it probably is. And I just bonked that guy out of the way. Sick. Uh... But yeah, I... I don't know, I think people are, like, just... They want grounds to hate on NVIDIA. Because... And honestly, I, I see the frustration. Because NVIDIA here have released a bunch of graphics cards at higher prices than they usually do. Much higher prices. Really higher prices. They aren't gouging necessarily because none of the cards are particularly worse than they were before. And I say that very skeptically and very like, yeah, I know, but they're also like kind of super pricey. And to some degree, I kind of hate the, the fact that like some of these cards still cost just as much a couple of years later. It's like, oh, like the 4090, sorry, the 3090 used to be cheaper. And now it's gone back up again because of some kind of scarcity. And that's, that's kind of frustrating. And especially for me as a buyer. I want a successor to my 1080 Ti. And as much as I could probably go for a 3080, I do productivity stuff. That 11 gigs of VRAM, you know, I could get a 4070 Ti. That actually does look a very, like a very enticing card for me. Other than it's got 12 gigs of VRAM and the bandwidth is the same as it used to be. I'm looking, I'm, I'm curious over here, I'm going, yeah, this isn't, like, going anywhere. But I've picked up the key. This is what I mean by the more puzzly aspects of the game. Uh, well, that's a door. That door is, uh, eternally closed. But I've seen everything in that area, right? Have I, have I bitten off too much? <laughs> I'm just eternally, eternally stuck. But, uh, yeah, like, um... I don't think there's a, uh... Like, how do I say? Like, I think people are getting very outraged over something because they don't have the ability to buy the graphics card, or they're upset that people are buying these super pricey graphics cards, which... I don't really care. And at the end of the day, like... Like, why... waste time getting offended about products I am not purchasing? The biggest thing I could possibly do to hurt NVIDIA is shut up. And, and literally, like, never mention their products, I'm never buying their products, I'm not looking at any of this stuff, like, I could do all that. That, that would be the biggest form of protest. Get off Reddit and Video, just literally disengage. Purchase your competitor, sure. Like, do everything. And, and, to be honest, I keep looking at the Intel GPUs going, on paper, those should be better. On, in practice, I'm not too sure if they are, but... Um... I still don't know what's going on here, because there's nothing... There's nothing up here, right? Man. So, yeah, there's nothing here. I'm actually kind of stumped here. What is going on here? Uh... Oh my gosh, wait! I'm an idiot. The chest was all the way at the beginning. It was actually like right there at the beginning. I'm like trying to go here, go. Oh, where's the chest? Where's it go? Uh, I go further down here. Yeah. Yeah. The chest. The chest was all the way back here. I'm. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Sorry. 
Um, yeah, yeah. So, moral of the story. Don't get offended over, like, products you don't want to buy. I think, like, you could say something's a bit insulting, sure, but, like, yeah, at the end of the day, like, like, these aren't really that bad products, and if anything, yeah, like, it's... It's been quite a while since NVIDIA's released a bad product. AMD, their bad products have been in a very particular spot. And yes, we got flippers, so now you can beat the water currents. This is a very useful ability. One in W3. And one in S2. Let's get the one in S2 first. Uh, okay, so now I can swim down and around and all over the town. I don't need the gray key again. Well, this is a wonderful room. I'm glad I found it. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Is there... Is, is this the, uh... The eternal blendo spirit of always getting offended over Reddit? Yes. Yes, it probably is. Um... But I don't know, I think there is like a degree of like, man, you know, like, we're just starting the year and already people are going, like, this is the worst thing ever. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm probably exaggerating, but it's also like, that will end the level right there. So actually what I want to do is we go here and we swim all around. Because now, look at that, this level like opens up. It's got so much uh, depth. Technically, I guess. Okay, okay, we are we're not going anywhere here. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, there were some other announcements as well. AMD announced uh, X3D, uh, 3D VK sh versions of the CPUs. I looked at it and I go, I, I didn't, I wasn't as impressed with the old VK sh version. I was in for the 5800X 3D. I was definitely impressed in terms of like, it makes this chip really good, but the actual price, it didn't, it, it wasn't like a necessity, it's like, yeah, the, the CPU does fine enough. Um, it definitely is a, like, helper, from the looks. I should probably just be crouching the whole way up. This is, yeah, you can keep going here and get a... Oops. Oh my gosh, and the red key was there the whole time. Ugh. Okay, okay, okay. Can I get can I get that? Sick. And then I break my way back out over here. And let's oh. Off, wiggle back on. There you go. Um, but yeah, the CPUs they look alright, although they didn't release any prices. And uh, yeah, the people are finding out about the quirks of like, oh, okay, well, like they've got a actually kind of low thermal limit right now at 89 degrees compared to the regular chips 95. I think it will still work out. I think people will definitely like find some value out of it. Um, but definitely, yeah, like. The quirks of the last one, people kind of ignored because they were like, oh, out of the box, it's so good. I don't know if these are necessarily gonna wow people in the same way, but I also think that there is gonna be a use case for them. If you're a person who plays games, you're probably gonna find that 7800X3D to be a really good CPU if the AM5 stuff didn't cost, like, an arm and a leg, so. Uh, so yeah, that level's done. Let's go back to... Now you gotta remember what levels things were on. I think W3 is one. Did I not pick up this coin earlier? Unless you gotta pick up all the coins in one go. Need some very glowy, glowy bits here. Uh, so that is where the red was. So now I'm trying to think, what was up here that... Is this where we did the running from the... No, it's not for the running from the sun. 
Maybe that's something further along in the level, like just normally. Or oh, swimming, sorry, swimming! I'm a dumby. So I see the door there. How do you get to the door? Oh, okay, okay, I guess we just go down here. I like how doors exist in the fake 2D space. Okay, cool. 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 Get out of here, fishy. Oh boy, now you gotta understand the currents. The motion of the ocean, as it's referred to. The flow of the H2O. I just went to the other side and I don't know if that did anything. Oh, wait. <laughs> Let's look at what's in the door. Hey, Yuru, how's it going? How's everything going? Oh. Oh my gosh, it's a rabbit fox thing? It is Year of the Rabbit coming up soon, so. Come down here, my man. Come down here. How? Oh. Alright, which direction is this going? Diagonally? It's gonna bounce. It's gonna bounce. It's gonna bounce. Sure. And then it stops. Oh, and then he launches a big one. Ah! Oh, and then he has a dude. Okay. Okay, cool. Cool. I'm reminding myself of. You don't speak English? Oh, that's okay. You don't have to speak English, you just have to enjoy the Wario. Actually, um, I had a, a, an interesting chat with a mate about, um, like, AI kind of art, um, and, and more just AI applications in general. I'm definitely, like, in the realm of, like, yeah, they're probably gonna, you know, be very takeover in terms of entertainment, but, like, there's a degree of, like, yeah, it's kind of cool, um, to just, like, have stuff be generated from minimal prompts and really give people kind of the creativity, or like the, the means of creativity, necessarily. I know it's like people are like, oh, but what if I, in what if people enjoy AI art and like take the demand away from, I guess, non-AI artists, from human artists. I'm still off the mind of like, well, I mean, if people are enjoying AI art, isn't that a good thing in the sense of successful? He is a very curious little, little rat guy. So, okay, so a dude comes out, and then the, and then if I, I'm gonna try and charge into him, and he goes, ah, oh, okay, I've gotta, I've gotta learn my diagonals. He's a very cute boss. There are some really weird Wario bosses, but this guy's pretty cute. Alright, let's go. Bonk. Oh, wait. Bang. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Just gotta get on the other side here. Now. Oh. <laughs> Alright, give, give, give me another one. There we go. Okay. The rule of threes with Nintendo bosses. One of the. Done two. Oh. Oh. It bounces. It bounces. I can't believe it. I got trapped hard right there. Um, yeah, I I definitely feel like there's. Um, I'm trying to recall what even was the original context, but just like yeah, like I think it's okay for an AI to create content and for people to enjoy it. Um, perhaps there's morals with like where did the AI get the content? What did it learn it off? Um, I think there's a lot of uh, AI that's currently based on. Rampant social media posts uh, because the data is unfortunately publicly licensable. As in, you can just ooh, you can just get an API key and scrape a lot of human data, whether it be photos or videos or images or sounds or anything. Like I said, photos and images, but there's a lot of um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of content that AIs are based on that's. Just, it is just social media. There's been rampant data collection in that regard. There we go. That was a good catch. Uh, and that's kind of what it's just turned into. I think... Oh, okay. Okay, no, we're good. We're good. There you go. First try. And this platform flips away to reveal 
down below. The green chest. Here we go. Thank you very much. What is inside this green chest, you might ask? Ah oh, yes, I'm a fan of that. There we go, a green fan. Oh, the fan itself isn't actually green. The whole game's in color, I don't know why I said, yeah, green. I'm colorblind, there you go, that was the real, real thing. I wonder, so colorblind people can't tell the difference between that fan and the grass behind it. Anyway, this has revealed the east. What, what better way to reveal the east than an oriental fan? So, let's, uh, let's work our way over to the east. You, you gotta, you gotta go the long way. You can't, you can't go from the other side. I like as well when you go between areas, it's daytime and nighttime in the other area. If you needed to flip from daytime to nighttime, you just, you know, enter an exit level. You could just do that. We got these little carrying poles. Oh gosh, I got a choice. Uh, decisions. Oh. There's a coin at the end. That's okay. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. There we go, we got a key. Uh... Warrior Land 2 and the 3, which you prefer? I love both. Impossible for me to choose. Ah! I saw an Etle, so it must be French. I really enjoyed Warrior Land, um... I think I prefer 3 more. So, uh... I don't know what in French what would be Warrior Land Trois. Um, is there a subtitle? I don't know too much French, unfortunately. Uh, and especially most French I learned was like uh, one year in high school, and all I remember was uh, saying "zut" a lot because uh, you gotta learn your your safe for, for high school swear words. Um, but also. Uh, And always uh, go, uh... What was it? Oh, I guess that's not even a platform. And you can't swim in this water because it's too thick. Uh, and always go, uh, like, Je m'appelle bien Uh... Le... Uh, je... Uh, je... Uh, I don't... Ah... Oh. I, I, I know, like, you can say, Je aime... Je aime... Something like that, which means, like, I, I love or I enjoy, rather. Like... Unless it's, like, actually, like... An expression of, like, romance. I, I'm not too sure if it's actually that or not. So, okay, so we got this platform here, and then there's that there. And that just goes into the ground, and... Ah! Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I got it. Um, I think I enjoy Warrior Land 2 because... Sorry, Warrior Land 3, because you have these more puzzly kinds of levels. Uh, Warrior Land 2 feels a bit more just kind of more direct platforming, um, and that's fine, and to be honest, they're both great games. I guess it's just the preference and, uh, in some ways, like, what are you used to and what are you not used to and what kind of, like, tickles your fancy a bit more. So, yeah, I was like, you gotta ride that one and you'll, you'll roll off it. Um, so yeah, uh, I definitely do enjoy it more than Warrior Land 4, at least... Ages ago, when I did play Warrior Land 4, it was not the game for me. Um, it just felt very different, even though I feel like it's probably a lot more direct in terms of its platforming kinds of characteristics. Oh, look at this weird looking flute! I really dig the music in this game as well. It's just got a fun, like, noisy sound design, so... Anyway, the, the music note casts away, but... You like how I held off going to W2 for the longest time? There you go, there's a... There's a thing. The note comes and it reveals a... Uh, lots of that going on. So, snakes everywhere. Where do we go? Well, clearly, let's go to S1, because there's a snake there. I'll get there, don't worry. Uh, okay, so now there's a snake somewhere. And... Pfft. Fall into the deep again. Uh, um, yeah, 
I guess there's a lot of exciting stuff in 2023 uh, in, the, in the realm of video games. Oh, there's a snake. Hi there. Hi there, snake. Oh, he's because he lights things on fire, so now you got to be on fire and set something on fire. I don't think this is really the best way to set things on fire, but sure. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of exciting video games coming out. Uh, me, as a very big normie, I am really looking forward to playing uh, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Like I can jump on his head and go up a bit. Whoop, there you go. I guess the fire might be useful somewhere, but... Oh my gosh, this is a... this is a room and a half. Oh, bubbles! How do they work? You can direct where you go, but you gotta go up. So... <sighs> Dang it, bubbles. Um... There we go. All the way through. What are these slagmites? Slagtites. Slagmites are in the ground. And I need the key. <laughs> okay, well, let's find the key. Um... But, uh, yeah, the, I think there's a lot of exciting stuff, a lot of good music. Peter Gabriel already has released a single for his new album that he's been teasing forever. And he's finally about to make it. So hooray. There's a sleepy bird right there, you see that. Um, I think also there's a, there's a new, I'm looking forward to the new Stephen Wilson album. I really dig his stuff. I'm kind of like, it's hard for me to like, hate his stuff. I even like Future Bites. People apparently hate Future Bites, and I go like, nah man, that Future Bites is smart. Whoa. I, I, I hope you could see exactly what I was going for there, but... Uh... Yeah, I, and, and I, I, I would say, oh, 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 I'd also men uh, would mention, uh, as a, it's not really a New Year's resolution, but one thing I really want to learn how to do this year is two things. One, I really want to, like, produce some cool music. I really want to, like, just learn the weeds. Oh, you get to do it three times. I really want to learn, like, just being a bit competent, so, or, yeah, being competent at creating music. I want to be able to know, hey, what, uh, filters? Filters? What kinds of effects do you put on? How do you create the kinds of sounds that, you know, I hear in songs? I want to be able to, like, go, hey, like, I made that sound. And then, uh, and go from there. I feel like I've got a decent playing potential, and obviously, like, we're in the age of digital music, like, production. You can totally cheese how you're performing. Like, you can make it sound alright in a decently digital sense. I think there's a degree of, like, yeah, you could probably get real musicians to really go for that, but, uh, go, go for the real authentic sound, and honestly, like, I don't know if I play any instrument quite well enough to get away with it. There you go, let's say, uh, a bow, a star rod, something. So here we go. Let's move on to the next level. Finally, after all this time, the volcano's base. Back again, this time in the day. I'm looking at this, I'm going, hmm. Thank you, my man. Not very bad. That is the best and possibly only compliment I've gotten this year so far, but... I will say I've played this game before. And it's a, it's a fun game, because it looks super tricky. It looks very technical, but it's surprisingly, surprisingly approachable. And I think isn't that what lots of games strive to be? Like, fun looking. Technical, but... Yeah. Okay, so... There's that. I don't need that key anymore. So what have they been telling me about? What... what is the next big thing? There's that one coin all over again. What is the next... I guess, actually, there was that there. Let's, how about, let's just go in there. There we go. That's 
probably a reason why I couldn't continue in here. Oh, it was the wheels! It was the wheels! That why that was why I couldn't do it. So now I got the wheels. I'm riding, I'm chilling, I'm vibing. There's a guy that's gonna set me on fire. That's okay. I love like conveyor belt like dancing around. You'll stream later. Ooh. Nice. Some good some good fun. You know, everyone streams. Ah yes, the bats. You touch the bats and you become Draculard. Hit down, and you become Bat! Where you can then fly up, but you gotta watch out for tears, I guess. Don't let anyone cry on you. I don't think there's any real need to be a Bat anymore, but... Look at that, a green key! Uh, and the other thing I want to really, like, learn how to do, and that's why I've got this, uh, this Silicon Power SSD on my desk, is I want to really learn Linux as a daily driving environment. I've used Linux a lot in Enterprise, so I, I go, yeah, like, I get it. I know what's going on. But I've never used it to be like, hey, like, people can run games on this, technically. Like, how how feasible is it? I know there was that Linus Tech Tips video from, um, I don't know if it was 2022, it might have been 2021. Um, but it was, uh, all in one baby! Uh, it was like, yeah, Linus and Luke uh, tried driving Linux, and on day one, Linus just, like, blows away the entire desktop environment. Uh, thank you. Uh, Linus just, <laughs> he just tries to install Steam, and in doing so, he uninstalls his desktop environment. So it just runs the Linux, like, a Linux shell underneath, and there's no interaction with anything so there you go look at that but hang on I've grabbed the green treasure not the red one yet haven't I look at that I like to look at that I think it's three spoons three spoons is cool so yeah I'd like to give Linux a go um, so tomorrow I'm gonna try and install Drauga OS because obviously, if I'm un <laughs> like unaccustomed to Linux, Linux desktop environments, clearly installing some, you know, fork of... I'm not too sure if it is forked from Ubuntu. I think it is. But it's just like, yeah, like, just pull some fork of Ubuntu and just go from it instead of just going off Ubuntu. So, I'm pretty sure you gotta go... All the way here. Oh, I guess that one relied on the snake. So I think there's probably another one that's not relying on the snake. Like, if you just keep going from from the snake onwards. But yeah, what dangers will entail me? I don't know. I will stick to doing streams on the Windows just because it's working. And I don't want to, like, break the working stream environment. I say as I have reinstalled Windows since the last stream, but... Um, Gosh, it took me a while to, like, really make sure that my settings were all correct. I tell ya, I gotta streamline how I switch between installs. Um... But, uh, yeah. I feel like a bit of spring cleaning, like, if- Oh my gosh. <laughs> I got better. I mean, I've got the key, and now I'm just gonna go back. <laughs> um... But I feel like a, a, a bit of fun, like, spring cleaning, just from everyone, like, you know. I got stuff, like, physically even, I don't really need. I got a lot of, like, just old electronics and other kinds of things from ages ago. I need to get rid of them. So, you know, I'm gonna make it the year where, you know, we clean up, we, uh, we refresh, and, uh, we start anew. Ish, ish. No, it, like, not everything, but just, like, um, you know, like, there, there is junk and clutter. That probably is there in plain sight, but, you know, you just kind of look and you go, yeah, I'm like, you know, it's always been there. I think it'll be good to, you know, really make sure that, like, the stuff I have is the stuff I legitimately do use. Because it's always, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure, isn't that the phrase? There's always going to be stuff out there where it's like, yeah, you know, someone might actually really, really want to use that. 
So there we go. Open up. We got a, 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 a bangle. I mean, I'll, I'll accept the bangle, you know. There we go. Game is saved. Okay. So, to the other place with the snake. Back to the old N2, the peaceful village. Again, it's kind of it's kind of fun, like seeing the level of daytime again. Uh, just something very different. So, uh, yeah, instead of zombies everywhere, it's uh, donut people. But there's the snake. So the snake will help boost me up onto the roof. Uh, I should now go in this pipe and pick up a coin, and now I'm ah. I see. Give me donut. This is a specific donut block. Uh, I'm going. I'm going all the way. <laughs> That's kind of fun. That is like there. Yeah, that one area you saw before. That's how you get the key all the way down there. So it's good fun. It's nice and fun. And yeah, you can't really bounce up from there, but that's okay. So I've got the key, I gotta find the chest. I guess, maybe keep going along the tops? Like, I stopped there, but... Dodge your, your mean tricks. Okay, that looks like there's a roof there, there's... Not much going on over here, okay, sure. That's an elusively locked door. And this is a open door. Sure. Well, there's the red chest, and there's a... Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember this one. Okay, so... Wario can't jump up two blocks while he's fat. But what you can do... Is you can bump that guy up. Just once. Just only once. That's all you need. And you gotta, then you gotta work off your diet. The, the donuts bounce off him, he's impervious. He is immune to donuts. Anyway, then you jump up one ledge and repeat the process. I don't think I. Actually, I guess I could just bump. Oh wait. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait a minute. I don't need to wait for him to to go the whole way. I need to bump him up to the top because I just need to get up to the top with him up there. Bump, bump, bump. Like, that's all, that's all he needs to be. He just needs to be up there. I love how, like, Game Boy games have, like, a bit of space outside the screen. That's, like, I'm pretty sure they work off a, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure it's a 256 by 256, like, window. And obviously, like, you know, there are levels in this game that are much wider than 256 by 256, but the whole point is that, like, it's effectively a view into a full NES kind of game space. Which means you could, like, quickly re-implement NES games like that. But then obviously, hey, you know, there's a bit of off space. So if I move the world underneath that, then, you know, that's how you get much larger worlds. And obviously that's what happens for games like Super Mario Bros. 3. Yeah, look at that, it's a book! And I now have a Star Rod as well, with the book. I now know the spell to freeze the ocean in the east. To which, I have now unlocked the Frigid Sea. So that's cool. I think also there's uh, another treasure. Yeah, I can get the green treasure. So, oh my gosh, that zombie's coming. So I'm pretty sure this is because I can do the butt smash? Or is it just because I can go over that wall? I think it is just because I can go over that wall. Oh my gosh, these these guys remind me of Squidward, I don't know. Big nose, it's always Squidward. Um, but yeah, over the past uh, few weeks I have played a couple of games. I uh, particularly played... Greetings Blub, how's it going? How is 2023 tweet, uh, treating you? It could be tweeting you as well, but... How's it treat treating? So, the store's only open at night. And, uh, I think that pipe is there for a good reason. Very decent. Decent is pretty good. 
Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I'm feeling nice and refreshed and back into things and uh, I was just talking about uh, cleaning up the the weeds in the sense, you know, stuff that you have that you don't really need anymore, but it's still always there, it's, you know what I mean? So it's just like, yeah, like, you know, I'll take 2023 as a wonderful opportunity to clean up, to fix up, to remove the clutter, to clean up the clutter. And go from there. And one thing uh, I really wanted to do was uh, try out Linux as a full, like, kind of desktop solution, which would encourage me to leave a bit less lingering around on the Windows install. You know, put important files on the NAS, that kind of stuff. Oh, wait. Okay, so that guy's all the way down there. How do I... Oh, I just... I just, I just free him. So now I've got to figure out this whole bit while not being able to see. I've kind of been playing this game too long, because I now just, like, know what Warrior walks like. And down the pipe, which shall hopefully reveal... I think I'm gonna be on fire. Which distribution? I'm probably gonna be using, um, Draugr OS, because, uh, for, for game playing, mostly. Um, just to, just to kind of see how it goes. There's going to be some programs where it's just like, I'm not going to be able to run them on Linux. Uh, clearly, photo, um, not photo, but like video editing, I use Premiere, and there's no real Linux solution to that. I thought you could jump with this. And that would allow you to go down the, down the bits here. So why am I in a room with... Oh! Yeah, I was thinking, it was like, there's got to be a way to break the ground here. That's a bit cheeky, but sure. There you go, Warrior's flexing, he's looking all good. Pick the chest. What is inside? Treasure, so, so yeah, I'm probably gonna go with Dragon OS. Um, it's based on Ubuntu, I think, maybe. Um, but I saw it on a bunch of really tacky best uh, Linux distros for gaming lists. So it's gotta be good. So, I think uh, the new level is the new one to go for. This is kind of interesting, like, just on a first run, like, you get to go to so many of these levels, like, right away. I've still not opened any of the blue chests, and... <sighs> How many treasure chests have I actually gotten? Is there, like, a, uh... I guess there is, there's a, there's a button up here. I have 24 of the, the, the chests. Do we go for a, a hundred? We go on to the next boss. Oh, yeah, no, nothing says frigid sea like, a uh, Ice physics. This is... It's neat, but it's also like, oh my gosh, this slippery ass. Uh, so why am I up here? Can oh, okay. Break the wall. Get that. Get that key. Um. And yeah, I just want to see like if I can daily drive it on days where I'm just gonna, you know, open up Discord and chat to people and play games. And it's like, also, how is playing a game on it? Is is it alright? I mean. People always talk about how, you know, you gotta deal with graphics drivers, but it's like, I think the work's been done to make the compatibility layer so much better, and obviously, you know, we've got, we've got the Steam Deck, which, by the way, is finally available in Australia. Perhaps unofficially, but Kogan.com.au is finally selling Steam Decks. Um, I don't really have a huge intention to get one, because it's like, I don't play handheld. I don't really play remotely. I like being in a larger space. Um, I guess, I guess, just get that. That's, there you go. Um, but yeah, I, I thought, you know, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to, to work with. And then at least I know. At least I know what's going on, so. Power up! So we got a little spiky helmet. Which, uh, clearly doesn't render, it's more just Warrior's head is heavily. Yeah, I, like, I don't want to say that Linux is better than Windows and particularly, like, any way, well, I mean, there's some things I know, but it's also just like, yeah, like, if, if Windows is working for you, don't feel like it, you know, it's, it's not really as good. That being said, I find Linux is definitely, I definitely was using, um, Lubuntu on a real, like, crappy, like, laptop I use for uni. Um... Yeah, 
yeah, yeah. it's it's a nice environment to to work with as well like because um at least when i was at uni it's like hey i'd ssh into the the uni machines and they're running the same architecture and so i just could compile programs on that and go over uh what's up onion kid your stomach oh my gosh it's wario himself wow so i'm pretty sure there's a f oh yeah we've got the, the quicksand of doom here it's Wario himself. Ah, yeah. The work laptop, it's like, eh, you don't really get any choice in what's on it. Um, I know my work, like, they're heavy into mechs, and, uh, I just... It's not for me. It's, it's, it's not for me. Look, it's one of my greatest achievements. Wario Land 3 for the Game Boy Color. Oh, wow, I really enjoy this game, Wario. I'm so glad you're in it. I actually, I do really enjoy this game, so, uh, tip, tip my hat to you, real warrior. Look guys, the Virtual Boy Ultimate Classic System. Okay, one day I legitimately will play Warrior Land on the Game Boy. The real second Warrior Land, by the way. Can't ground pound these. I think, do I have to come here at the other time of day? Possibly, because I'm thinking like, well, I'm going over here, and I can't recall if... You know, it, oh! But I gotta do a minigame. I feel the stuff running down my buttocks. Oh my gosh. You might want to get that looked at, Warrior. That doesn't sound healthy. Whoop. Watch out for the sonic waves. Um, and he has been subdivided. Ah, okay, so I, I do remember not being able to break that block. Hello there. How you doing? Okay, so that's the mini game. Did I pick up a key yet? No. I'm just gonna hope the key is somewhere to my left. But, let's do the mini game first. Are you, oh my gosh, Warrior, are you okay? You okay? Too much garlic, bro. Too much garlic. Oh my gosh. You gotta you gotta chip it a little bit because then you gotta be able to knock it all the way over. There we go. Why is it all golf by the way? I guess like I prefer it over the um like puzzle flipping kind of minigame, but it's also just like, yeah, like it, it's golf. I'm I I over here. Oh no, I'm good, I'm good. It's like it's golf. It's like I'm not expecting that. My stomach is rolling from eating that onion and rotten garlic. Oh my goodness. Warrior, you gotta, you gotta look after yourself. Have you tried, uh... Gosh, what's the, what's the trendy diet up to now? Oh, okay, that's a good coin. It's probably that, because people are like, oh my gosh, I'm in a game game. There we go, I was thinking there's gotta be a way to break down into it. Okay, so the treasure's over there, but how do you get there? What was this? What was this door? Where did this go? No, that that was the end of the that was the red treasure chest or something. So, okay. Oh, I'm going. I'm going down. I'm going down. Stomach is rolling. Get the. What was the reference? I, I'm sorry, man. I'm, I, I'm too old. I'm too old for references. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna hope. I'm gonna hope if you tell me it, I'll be like, ah, oh, I'm an idiot. But. Okay, I broke the ground there. And then. How about you do this? Okay, I'm just going. I am just going. <laughs> oh, he sent me a YouTube link. He sent me... Uh, is that, is that Rickroll off the top of my head? Do I click it? Do I dare click it midstream? I'm muting the audio because I know, I know I've got the, the audio going midstream. 
Oh. Yeah, okay. 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 Yeah, no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Living with Wario episode 2. Thank you for reminding me. Okay. Okay. Alright. Cool. So, oh. How do I get this? How do I... How do I get that? That's... Either that, or it's all the way back down... Like, I mean, I don't know what's more to the left here. So perhaps... There's a hidden... Wall? You gotta, like, break, or, like, fall into? Oops. I mean, granted, like... It's like, you're on stream, and if you're not prepped for, like, sound, so many YouTubers get caught out by, like, you know, a, vid a, a video that's, like, ear rape, or it's, like, um, you know, <laughs> saying, uh, saying bad words that they don't want on their stream. For example, you can't have, uh, swear words on your YouTube, uh, video, or at least in the first 15 seconds, um, or else your video gets immediately demonetized based on just the captions. It, um, it's kind of spooky, I don't know. Really, I mean, how does anyone work in YouTube systems anymore? Oh my gosh. There's gotta be a way to get rid of that guy, because he's just like, he's just chilling up there. Okay, do a shot. There you go. Okay. Now what? Uh... Yeah... The, there's like a brand new, like, just enforcement of it as of 2023 like as soon as 2023 started it was just like oh yeah duh, I cleared the minigame and I wasn't going past the minigame block um but like as soon as 2023 started it was like a lot of people just, just started noticing like hey like you're not allowed to say like bad words right at the beginning of a, a video um 2023 the year where we keep wrestling with YouTube's content ID guidelines all that fun stuff um so, that's good fun. Would you look at that? It's another pencil. Wario is about to... get a five course meal worth of crayon. But anyway, color it in yet again. <laughs> what does it do? Well, I guess you'll have to... you'll have to find out, so... I shall do one more level for the stream, and that's... let's go to the town chaos. YouTube is too powerful to boycott. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, no one is going to move to any com competitor service. I have looked into setting up a peer tube. It's not really like the greatest like alternative because it does rely on like someone to host it. It's a bit of an expensive solution. I still think it's absolutely insane. YouTube doesn't charge anything for its creators because the creators are able to upload so much footage. YouTube. I don't know, I don't think YouTube how like, YouTube stores the originals in any way. I think they only store the, um, encoded versions. Because, like, you can clearly upload, upload a video with such a high bitrate. Um, so, like, clearly they gotta encode it. Um, so I'm curious, what was, what was the reason why? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and yeah, you'll get caught out if you, um, ever, uh, you know, rely on YouTube's sources for re-downloading your videos. I still have, uh, fun fact, I still have actually the very original versions, or at least the uploaded versions of all my content. I've just hopefully been keeping it. I think maybe there might be some gaps, just like very early on. But for the most part, like, I still have Donkey Kong Country uh, 1. AVI, I think. They were AVIs or WMVs for a long time. Uh, back when it was like you're toying around with stuff, and it's like, oh, what if I use DivX? And you do like stuff like that. DivX is hilarious because it's literally just like, um, oh, look at that. I knew it. I knew that'd be a, a gap here. Purely for a coin. Purely for a coin. It's worth it. <laughs> um, VP09, the source video will get reincoded, but nah, like. Yeah, if, if you want the absolute greatest quality, you're gonna have to hold the source yourself. Um, and, uh, to be honest though, like, and, and, and this one's a bit of a, like, you know, is this, is this a Duma comment in the sense of, like, it's okay to, like, not have, you know, like,
like not everything I've made has been good. So I'm not like as fussed about like my, my older content necessarily disappearing into the ethos. I do hold on to it because I think it'd be great to like look back on personally. Um, and I'm, I don't know what YouTube is going to do because I think YouTube is unfortunately going to be one of the first sites to disappear from the internet, like in terms of the, the big web 2.0 kind of internet. Uh, what games have you played recently? I have, uh, think the Tomb Raider streams were the last I caught as I got busier again and daylight savings time or how you call it happened for you and then the reversal of it happened here so you can stream like two hours earlier for me compared to before. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there was the Tomb Raider 2 streams and then, uh, I can actually, um, I got my old concept and I'm just gonna pull up. Uh, after Tomb Raider 2 there was Resident Evil over Halloween and then I did a one-off stream of LEGO Racers. I played through Dragon Quest 1 on the Game Boy Color, and then I played all three uh, N-Space Mary Kate and Ashley video games. So Mary Kate and Ashley, Magical Mystery Mall, Crush Course, and then Sweet 16. All in one stream each. That kind of, that was a weird Christmas present. Uh, Web 2.0 is, um, I guess like, uh, just the idea of like, um, like, people flock to various large websites that are like large content creation style websites. So, social medias, YouTube, Facebook, um, like Instagram, TikTok, I guess, counts on that list as well. So we've got this area, and I've handled this area. You go, th went through this whole bit just to get the grey key. So I'm trying to think, like, what's the thing that I have now that will allow me to continue on with this. I'm gonna need, I need, I need to use this in order to break my way out. Cool. I'm gonna grab the key, but, um, so yeah, I've got some plans to do some titles that aren't just, like, me playing the next Wario Land, like, again and again. Oh my gosh, this is a lucky dip. This is a lucky dip. This is a lucky dip. Okay, let's do it. Let's go for the final. Um, I've got some plans to play some games that aren't necessarily, yeah, Wario Land, uh, or, um, other ones that I've, I've got like two that I want to replay from my very, very old stuff. Uh, and play it a little better than you used to. Web to, uh, Humanity 3.0. Well, unfortunately, ah, yes, this boss, I love this boss. This is the rabbit. And this one's real fun because it's like, there's a little, uh, like, indicator up in the top. And, uh, you're playing a first of three kind of hoops. So you gotta, you gotta, oh, oh. you gotta... What do you gotta do? You gotta hit the turtle and then you gotta get the, the rabbit into the goal. Also, I guess you don't pick up enemies like you did in the original Mario Land. I just kind of felt like that. I was like, yeah, I'm not picking up anything. Guys, you remember Mario Land? Incredible, incredible. Oh, exactly. How do I get this guy out of the way? This is Year of the Rabbit right here. the rabbit get over here. I, I keep jumping on him and just keeps going the other way. Okay. What is he doing? I'm hearing weird noises over there. Okay, I can bump him. Nope. We're not, we're not getting anywhere. Uh... <laughs> like, I like the boss in, in concept, because yeah, if the boss hits you, he's gonna try and oh my gosh. If the boss hits you, he's gonna try and score you into the goal. Like, that's that's the whole gist of the boss. It's kind of good fun, but it also means you get three goes. Uh, okay. Okay, hold on, hit that guy. I, I, I'm just gonna get used to like jumping over him because he bounces up. That throws me off right there. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. All right. Let him come over again. Let him come over. Here we go. Nope. <laughs> I'm bouncing the wrong way. Oh my gosh. Okay, he's doing something a bit weird over there. Here he comes. Here he comes. I gotta, I gotta not do that. I swear. <laughs> I get it. I'm gonna get it. Don't worry. Warrior is so fed up with even how I'm playing. Okay. 
Oh no! No 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 no! No! At least, at least you can also like run into the goal. I guess it's that. Thank you, goalie. You play both teams. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, she just jumped up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Okay. Nope, 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 nope. Bad, 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 bad. Oh my goodness. It's just a little tiny turtle. He's the real savior of this boss fight. Maybe I shouldn't be just dashing into him, I should be just jumping. Bumping him. Just get it, get, get, you, you gonna get in there? Do I need to bump the turtle out of the way? Like, is he, he's very temperamental, this guy. Like, look at that. It's, he should be getting in. He should be getting in. He should be getting in. What am I doing wrong? Is there a goal of my own? Do I just have to... ground pound him? Like... No? I am doing something wrong. How did I do this in, as a kid? What did I do as a kid? What... <laughs> what other moves are under my belt? I'm knocking him. He's clearly gonna try and knock me into the goal. There's clearly a turtle here who's walking away. I doing? Someone please, please tell me if you know as well. Oh no. It feels like too clunky to like try and like knock him in. Like, yeah, like that should have gone in. If that was the way to do it. So what other moods are under my belt? Shall be a ball forever. What am I actually doing wrong? I hold on. Okay, okay. Let him get a free hit. Let him get a free hit. Cause, cause maybe it's like, oh, like I've got to know what to do. So he goes around. He's gonna, he's gonna get you. He gets you. He then kicks you in, and he gets past the goalie. So that's. What he does. Perhaps that's the, the issue. Is that I'm on the wrong side of the goal? Like. As in, he's over here. I'm gonna bump him over here. And then I should be hitting him from, like. Here or something. Like, is that it? Like, I'm supposed to just strike it in? From a different angle? Like, he should be standing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I knew it, I knew it would end in tragedy. Okay, can we just let me, let me jump over here? Okay, right there. No. Nope. He just he just bounced off him. He actually just bounced off him. What is the issue? What is what is the actual like thing that's getting in the way? If the kid can figure this out, why can't I? But like what other moves do I have? The ground pound is just not doing anything. It's fair enough, but like There's the occasional like he hit I hit him like very horizontally and not like in an upward arc. Maybe that's what I need to do, but like... I'm definitely doing something wrong, I tell ya. He's just gonna eternally catch all of them, I swear. Alright, if anyone legit knows, if anyone legit knows... 
No. Oh! First try. First try. Okay, keep watching. You're my lucky charm. You're my lucky charm. You just literally have to get it over him. You just... You just gotta get it over him. <laughs> Come on. Let me win one for once. Oh. <laughs> Problem is the turtle is also like... Oh, he's, he's jumping more aggressively now that I've got the hit. I love him in concept. I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm terrible at this, apparently. I've been doing the rest of the game alright, but... Year of the Rabbit is uh, not my year, apparently. Oh yeah, this <laughs> I'm curious how a speedrun would handle this. Oh dang! So you don't even have to hit the turtle, you just have to get a good shot. That's it. I think just the aerial shot from the edge of the, the building. Like once you once you see it happen. Once you see it happen. I think that's all you need. Uh, or that, that works too. There you go, first try. Flawless. Can't, uh, can't improve upon that. And the, the, the turtle has become a platform. Or he has left the stratosphere. No, he has become a platform. It was him all along. He was a real mastermind. I didn't pick up the key. I don't have the key. <laughs> Where's the key? That <laughs> was the key! I think the key, actually the key is probably down one of these. Wandering zombie forever keyless. This area looks a bit familiar. Yeah, I I thought that took its time. <laughs> that took its sweet time. Zombies eat the robot. That's what zombies are for. We will never have a robot uprising as long as we have zombies. And we'll never have me getting to the destination on time. Because I'm doing that. So just f for reference as well. The red key... ...was... ...here. This was the red key, right? Right here. I've got to be able to hit that switch and still come back up. Right? Is there a way to break to the ground? Like... You have a health bar? There is no health bar in this game. Warrior just takes hits and he walks on with life. <laughs> Getting hit purely just kind of knocks you about. That's all it is. Which means this is really a puzzle game. At the end of the day. It is figuring out how to get from one location to another. I'm thinking I got a ground pound here or I mean I could be on fire, but I don't see that helping me necessarily. I haven't made it real clear like being on fire and like what's what's the actual like uses of that apart from I lit some torches once. If I jump high enough, can these guys hit me or no? Nope. nope. Like breaking the ground anywhere. Nope. And this isn't gonna break. Okay. So I need to get that red key from just up there. But I can't do it. Is some great Game Boy Color sounds, yeah. I feel like that, yeah, this came out in 2000, which also meant like we were pretty much, you know, ready for the dawn of the, the Game Boy Advance and all of its advancements, so. I think this is a very last hurrah for the Game Boy, as, uh, as old of a system as it is. Yeah, so there's that. I gotta be able to get up here. There's gotta be something to this. 
Why am I able to go in here? Yeah, so... I got this... Platform. Like, I'm not seeing anything I can really directly interact with in this room. Breaking the wall. Nope. Fans. Is that blue key up there? That's just, like, teasing me. And then, yeah, we've got this room. It's just a room. With the blue chest. I like how he turns the other way. Kind of weird. It's the blue chest and the switch that flicks everything back over, but also blocks me from getting out. So I need to be able to hit that switch, or... I mean, maybe there's the other... S oh. There's the other switch higher up, and I'm curious. I think they're probably... There's always an overlap where it's like, you'll probably get Game Boy Color games later on. And... Developers are always allured by when a game console is compatible on the forward generation. So when I was playing those Mary Kate and Ashley games, well, one of them came out in 2001. The PS2 was certainly out. It didn't even have a dedicated PS2 version. It was just, it's on the PS1 because everyone, you know, with a PS1 can play it on the PS2 if they got one. Which is true, but it's, the game looked like butt. <laughs> it's like, there's much better. Gran Turismo 3 is my bench line. And also 2001 has GDA 3 and it's got a... Um... Final Fantasy 10? Final Fantasy... Actually, Final Fantasy 10 was 2000. No, it was 2001. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what about the ladder on the bottom right? That just goes to a dead end. Um, and you would break the walls because it's like, well, it's not really a dead end, but you'd break the walls... Um, and it would just get you a coin, like a, a, a note coin. The note coins are just like, you collect them at the, um, the very end, because you need to collect all eight in one run. So this is what I'm thinking. You got this, like, thing, and in this room, it's a little button, and that will flip the polarity. And now, I think, I think that's what it will do. And then, I'm gonna now take the zombie down. Push this along. One bit at a time to get to the end. And now I'm gonna work. Oh, okay, down, down I go. I'm gonna go back to this door. And hopefully, that one switch affects both, like, the, the blocks, as in it'll affect the blocks in this room as well as the other room. And it does. Cool. Okay. The theory was correct. The theory was correct. There were two switches the whole time. Why get allured by one switch? You can just have another switch. So now I've got the key. I just gotta wander back. Thanks for the follow, Edoro. Appreciate it. You are now part of the Blendo Club. The Blendo 2023 Club. 2023 memberships. I don't have any actual memberships, but just like, yeah, hey, you know. You get to be a little bit of the streams. AFK, see you later. Alright, see you, Mr. Edoro. Have a good one. There we go. Back in here. Watch out for the donut. Donuts are terrifying. I do not want one. Dun -dun 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 -dun. I probably did that last year as well. Alright, and then let's get all the way over to the far end. The very oh, duck. Zombies coming at me. Coming at me from everywhere. Uh -huh. And down I go. To Sunlight is the best cure for zombieism. Back to the turtle. Up we go. And there's the chest. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? <laughs> it was painfully hard. Well, painfully obnoxious for me, so... There we go, the musical box. How wonderful, so... And my coins are missing. But yeah, this is the second of the five... Oh yeah, yeah, and you know where the blue chest and the key are. Whereas the green ones, I don't know. And I still don't have any of the blue treasure chests on any of the levels. What a wonderful jingle. What does this jingle do? It reveals the promised land. Or at least, the bank of the wild river. So now, yeah, we kind of start going back to the older worlds. And suddenly you now have a bunch more levels to, to discover. Um... 
But I think that's a that's a pretty good place to stop the stream. Like we got also I love how you got this information as well. So you can watch the cutscene just in case you forgot where like the game just hinted at your your other levels. Um and uh yeah, I've got 27 of the goodies, which it feels like it's been a fairly deep deep adventure so far, but it's still only 27 of the 100 treasures. There's still a lot of treasure to go. So don't feel like it's over just yet, just because I've been fighting a couple of bosses. How many bosses, by the way? Like, three or four? I think it's actually been four. Like, it's been a good number of bosses so far, so... Anyways, uh, with that, to conclude the first stream of the year, I'd like to thank you so very, very, very much for watching. If you did enjoy this, uh, you can follow on Twitch, um, or you can subscribe on YouTube if you missed parts of it. VOD's on YouTube, gonna be pretty soon. Might be a little sooner, because I can encode the VOD uh, way quicker um, than I used to. Like, it saves an hour. I used to wake up tomorrow morning, because I usually go to sleep right after this. I wake up tomorrow morning, I, like, scrub through the video, kind of just make sure that, like, you know, everything's all good. And then I encode, and it takes an hour 15 or hour 30 or something like that. It takes a while. And then I go upload it to YouTube. And the YouTube upload takes like an hour, YouTube processes it for half an hour, and then it's like up like three or four hours after I'm awake. This saves at least one hour. <laughs> Everything else saves an hour, so I'm excited, I'm happy. So anyway, with you at home, stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late, and uh, remember to uh, score against the rabbit? That doesn't sound quite right, so. Oh well, have a good one everyone. See ya.